Every time the thief passes this car, he elbows it and walks away. Five seconds later, he came back around the other side and hit the handle with a tennis ball. The door was easily opened. Once in the car, Ciro glances at the back and finally focuses on the center screen. He took the pieces of iron from his bag, inserted them into the gaps and broke them open, earning $500. Ciro then searched the car for his next target, but he didn't find a single hair. He risked his life every day to steal for $500. He couldn't even afford the buttons on the steering wheel. The more Ciro thought about it, the more angry he got. He took out his penis and left his mark on the back seat. After peeing, Ciro felt much more relaxed. When he was ready to leave, he realized that the car door wouldn't open. Ciro panicked and went to open the passenger door. However, both the passenger door and the rear door were locked. In desperation, he went to the back of the car, which had just been corroded by urine, grabbed the handrail and kicked the window hard after he kicked for 10 minutes. Except for a few footprints, the glass gun be said to be unharmed. He went back to the driver's side, shaking the steering wheel and clicking the start button. All of this made him so tired that he lost consciousness. But the car did not change a bit. This was his profession at Waterloo. He slammed the steering wheel in anger. Suddenly, as if he had seen something terrible, he hid under a chair. It turned out to be a woman buying groceries who was passing by. Ciro was scared because stealing is a felony in this country. This little incident made Ciro calm down and start thinking. He opened the back seat and found a stash of spare tools. He chose a wrench and slammed it on the window. His hands were cramping up, but there wasn't even a white spot on the window. Ciro was completely helpless. If he can't break the window, he'll try the door. He was convinced that with his years of experience in burglary, all locks could be opened if he could just touch the cylinder. The plastic panels are losing ground to Ciro's attack. Help is in the air. Ciro happily reaches for the door, but he doesn't realize it's been modified. Not only did he miss the lock cylinder, but his arm was cut and bleeding. Ciro angrily grabbed a wrench and slammed it into the door. As if to make the door feel his pain, he slammed the door like a madman, but no matter how hard he tried, the door didn't even suffer a scratch. It turns out that when the owner rebuilt the car, he replaced the doors with steel plates. It's amazing how much detail he put into it. Ciro didn't believe that he couldn't get out of the car. If he couldn't break the car from above, he'd go underneath. He lifted up the seat and used a screwdriver to remove the mat. But Ciro's smite disappears after three seconds. What kind of person would seal the bottom of a car with cement? Ciro thinks twice and decides it's more important to stay alive. He pulled a gun out of his bag, aimed it at the front windshield and pulled the trigger. But it's bulletproof. The bullet bounced off the glass and hit Ciro in the thigh. His already fragile body is now even more vulnerable. He took off his shirt and tied it around his thigh to stop the bleeding. Ciro was already physically and mentally exhausted. At that moment, a woman passes by and sees that no one is in the car. So she tries to use the window to fix her makeup. He pressed his hand against the window, hoping the woman would see him through the glass, until she turned around and left. Ciro was still shouting at her back and honking the car horn, but she disappeared from Ciro's sight as if she were deaf. Ciro sits helplessly in the back seat. There was only one way out. He pulled out his cell phone and called the police. Prison is better than dying here, but his cell phone also ran out of battery due to the director's arrangement. Ciro took his last sip of coke with his injured buddy. He put back the center screen he had just stolen. Since he couldn't get out of the car for a while, he might as well listen to a psalm to distract himself from the pain of his wounds. But then a call came and through the center screen, Ciro reached out and pressed the answer button. Hola. Ciro didn't dare to respond for fear of being found out that he wasn't the owner of the car. The person on the other end of the line introduced himself as if he knew who he was. It turned out that the caller was the owner of the car. The owner said his car had been stolen 28 times, 29 including this one. No matter how good-tempered a person is, he'll be pissed off. That's why he's prepared this modified car for Ciro. Not only are the doors and windows bulletproof, but the shock-absorbing system is also the best. No matter what noise Ciro makes in the car, no one outside will notice, and the owner has thoughtfully polarized the windows. No one can see that there's a living person in the car. In addition, the owner says he can control any system in the car remotely. He's supposed to be wanting Ciro to figure out who's the lamb to be sacrificed. The owner could kill Ciro in a heartbeat if he wanted to. After hanging up the phone, Ciro slumped in his chair, waiting for the owner to retaliate. Instead, he turned on the air conditioning. The sudden cold air was a welcome relief for Ciro, who had been basking in the sun. He moved closer to the air vent to enjoy it, but he soon realized something was wrong. The temperature of the air conditioner was dropping uncontrollably. The cold air is blowing to Ciro from all the air vents. He tried to close the air vents, but realized that the fan blades on the vents had already been nailed shut by the car owner. He had to cut off the clothes to stop the bleeding and put them on. Then he pulled a strip of cloth from his jeans and tied it around his thigh to stop the bleeding. 
After that, he blocked the largest air vent with a foot wrist, and Ciro stuffed the rest with paper strips. But even that didn't help. The cold air came through every crack and crevice. Ciro was soon huddled in the back, shivering from the cold, just as Ciro was about to freeze to death. The owner of the car finally called again. This time the owner doesn't even say anything, but Ciro apologizes and hopes that the owner will be merciful and let him live. The owner of the car says he'll never do that, and provocatively says that the game has just begun. Then he hands up the phone amidst Ciro's angry insults. Ciro is impotent, even in his rage, but after he hung up, the owner turned off the air conditioning. Ciro enjoys the normal temperature for a moment. He waited for the owner of the car to retaliate. Just then a police car pulled up in front of Ciro. A policeman looked around the car. Ciro, who is usually terrified of cops, now wishes they could see him. He bangs frantically on the window to make some noise. But the policeman just leaves him with a ticket that says the window is too dark and leaves. Ciro is desperate again. In the evening it started to rain. He was sitting in the car, wishing the rain would fall into his mouth. But now all he could do was look at the rain and sigh. Then the owner of the car called again. Ciro begs the owner to give him something to drink. In order to torment Ciro a little longer, the owner says he has water in the trunk. Ciro was immediately energized and rummaged around in the trunk to find a bottle of blue water. At this point, Ciro doesn't care if it's poison or not, so he drinks it all. Ciro regains some energy from the water he had not seen for a long time. But before long, Ciro's body felt uncomfortable once again. The wound that had not been treated for a long time began to become inflamed and pus-filled, and his body temperature rose rapidly. To further torment Ciro, the owner turned on the car's heater. Ciro soon fainted under the constant heat. When he woke up again, he saw two teenagers walking towards the car. Ciro climbs into the driver's seat and realizes that they are thieves. Ciro looks at them with great anticipation, but they're so bad at stealing that they're not only unable to open the door, but they're caught in the act. One of the boys ran away, leaving his companion behind. The boy who opened the lock was beaten by other citizens. The crowd applauded, because stealing in this country is punished so severely. Even roadside cameras are protected by cages. If you haven't stolen, you can be stripped of your citizenship. As Ciro watched, he realized how hateful his behavior really was. He swore that if he could get out of here, he'd change his ways and become a new man. His confession seems to have been noticed by the owner of the car. As night fell again, the dashboard suddenly lit up. Ciro watched in disbelief, fearing that the owner of the car was acting on a whim. He lifted his weak hands to fasten his seatbelt and put the car in reverse gear. When he was sure no one was behind him, he pressed the gas pedal and slammed into the wall. All the airbags popped. Ciro was a little dazed, but fortunately he was fine. He kicked the rear windshield out and made his way to the convenience store with his injured body. He took a sip of water and a bite of bread, not caring about the stairs. While he was eating, the waiter reminded him to pay the bill before eating. Ciro quickly beat the waiter to a pulp. But it was all just a dream for Ciro. He's lost count of the days he's been in this prison car. He now eats paper when he's hungry and drinks urine when he's thirsty. His body is finally breaking down from this diet. And just when he's ready to shoot, the car light suddenly came on. A man in white was standing in front of the car. Obviously he was the owner of the car. When he opened the door, the stench hit him. The owner sprays half a bottle of air, freshener into the car before getting in. The owner continues to taunt the weak Ciro and eats chocolate in front of him. Ciro used his last strength to shoot the owner of the car and escaped. But he was so weak that the owner caught him before he could run to steps. Ciro struggled and called for help. A passing policeman saw this and pointed his gun at the owner. The owner of the car is holding Ciro hostage. The two sides are at a standstill. Reinforcements arrive soon after. The media is also on the scene. The crowd is growing, mostly in favor of the owner, because the police's inaction is to blame for the thieves' rampage. There was a lot of cursing. The negotiator stepped in to stabilize the owner and said there was nothing he could do to change the situation. Thieves will still be thieves, and if the owner kills someone, he'll go from being a good person to a murderer. In the end, the owner lets Ciro go, but he's completely disillusioned with the social order. He raises his gun and gets into the car, giving the negotiator a knowing smile. Then he takes out his cell phone and puts it on the roof of the car. As the countdown ends, the owner and the car disappear in an explosion. Ciro looks back at all this. I'm sure he had a different idea about life in the future.